Hello, could you please introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Michael Lanigan. Uh, what can you tell us about yourself? Uh, I'm an emergency room physician, work in New York City. Uh, currently live in uh, Morris Plains, New Jersey. So you're a physician, you're also a family, uh, uh, you're also a father of four? That's correct, yes. All right, so tell us about your experience with cable and television, like back when you were young. Yeah, so uh, for the viewers, I'm 58 years old, I was born in 1966, so our first, my first experience with TV was kind of what you read in the old days, you get up to change the channel, you might have to move the uh, antenna around to get good signal. Uh, we had, we did have a color TV, we had a black and white TV also. Um, and it was that way until sometime probably in the mid 70s. Um, a company called Gill Cable. Gill Cable. Uh, I lived in San Jose in the South Bay, South Bay area. Uh, came about and they had something called the G Channel. So they were playing relatively movies that have been released relatively uh, recently. In 1978, the first run movies are great on the cable. Beginning next Friday on the G Channel, you can expect Soaring Adventure in Skyriders. Um, and then um, that was part of the cable system, and you had a little box on top of your TV. It was A and B, and there were certain stations associated with each side. And that was my first recollection of uh, having cable TV. Why do you still pay for ca uh, still pay for cable in like an age of? streaming services? Um, I guess it's just what I know. Um, I still feel like I get a good selection of channels. Uh, I watch a lot of sports and I'm pretty much able to find everything I need on there. Um, I'm not a big movie buff, but you know, whatever I would want to watch uh, that had been, you know, that wasn't in the theaters is pretty much on there too. Um, so, I mean, I do use Netflix and some you know, the bigger streaming services. Uh, but I haven't quite left the cable world entirely. How much are you willing to pay for streaming services? Well, I don't pay too much for Netflix. Um, I also think we have Peacock and uh, Paramount. I have both of those basically to watch uh, soccer. And uh, I think I paid $10 less than ten dollars a month for all of them, maybe a little more for Netflix, I'm not sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, it depends, I guess, what's offered. I don't, I don't think, I think we're getting up to twenty, thirty dollars, that's probably a little high, unless it's something special. Um, so, ten or less, kind of what I'm thinking right now. What do you think about movie theaters? How do you think they're holding up in this age of uh, post-network streaming? We come to this place for magic. We come to AMC theaters to laugh, to cry, to care. Um, I think there's still a role for them. I mean, you're certainly, you know, when a movie gets released now, if it makes it longer than four weeks, that seems like a lot. Um, but uh, because these services are out there, and people are yearning for that, uh, for those movies if they didn't or didn't want to catch them in the theater. Um, it seems like movies get kind of turned over to uh, to those services now. What used to be, you know, DVDs again, another another thing that seems to have kind of gone by the wayside. How do you feel about buying movies and shows digitally? Uh, I mean, I'm fine with it. We, uh, you know, as you know, our our family does that uh, once every week or every other week. We'll may have to pay for something on YouTube. Um, so again, I'm not against it. It kind of depends on how badly we want to want to see the show. Um, but yeah, I have no objection. I mean, if you think about, you go to a movie now, it's going to cost you fifteen dollars or more per ticket, um, unless you're a senior or getting some kind of other discount. Uh, then snacks are, you know, astronomically expensive. So uh, you can blow eighty bucks on a movie very easily. Um, so. Think about it, you pay for your own service. I mean, sometimes they're up in the, in the teens to pay for, but 
you know, if you've got popcorn and everything in your house, you have it there, uh, kind of ends up being cheaper, to be honest. We sort of have a large DVD and CD collection. You want to comment anything about that? Have you contributed to that? No, or I not? think years ago I did. I don't really now. Um, but uh, I know you guys still pick up uh, a DVD that you that you want, uh, which is fine. Uh, we still have a player. And uh, it's there if you want it, but I mean, I feel like I can pretty much get anything I, I want uh, on. Netflix or YouTube or another, you know, any other source. So I don't think it's absolutely essential to buy DVDs. And again, I think that may be something that's going to probably go by the wayside eventually. So do you think, street, would you prefer streaming services over DVDs? Um, I mean, you know, there's no huge reason to buy DVDs. They're still kind of expensive, I think, for what you get. And I mean, if you're only going to watch it, once, maybe twice, might be better to just uh, you know get it on streaming uh, instead of having you know extra hardware kind of cluttering up your house. Uh, I know you you also have like you also have old tapes. Uh, when did you make the switch over to like CDs? Oh, do you think there? And you think there's like a? Do you think there's? I felt like advantage? CDs became more prominent in the uh, in the '80s. I actually. Summer of '85, I worked at a, at a record, and I worked at Warehouse Records, which is if you're from California, you know that chain. I don't think it exists anymore, but it was pretty big. It was kind of like Tower Records, and um, I spent a summer there. And I, at that time, I just had uh, records and, and then mostly cassettes, and that was the first time I was selling uh, uh, CDs, uh, music CDs. And then I kind of slowly brought my collection uh, eventually over to that, probably by late 80s, early 90s. What do you think about the introduction of uh, advertisements into uh, into streaming services? You're now uh, introducing plans where uh, you can buy a cheaper plan and have advertisements on there, and so you'd have to pay extra to have no advertisements. Yeah, that part I kind of hate, to be honest. I watch a lot of YouTube and my stuff gets interrupted by ads all the time, but I don't really see it at this point paying a lot of extra money to be ad free. Maybe at some point I will, I'll do that. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not crazy about it, to be honest. Would you agree that with the introduction of ads, there might be a decline in movie in like movies and television? Um, I don't think it's come to that yet. Um, again, I think people like the convenience. They can watch it whenever they want. Um, it's relatively inexpensive, particularly if you're, you know, at home having your own, uh, you know, your own snacks and your own food. That really takes the price off going to the theater. So um, I wouldn't say it's an interference now, but I think eventually uh, either, you know, everybody will will buy the ad-free version, or you know, maybe all. If one service goes ad-free entirely, then the others might have to follow. So. Um, but it'll be interesting to watch. I think streaming is, is here to stay for sure. I think I've lived a you know good life. I was probably uh, at a time when I, I saw the oldest type of entertainment going even back to the 30s and 40s. What was first there? Watched it evolve through cable and then satellite. I mean, we had satellite for a short time at one of our houses. We had direct TV, uh, and then just see how everything's uh, evolving now. Um, I think. People want to watch stuff when they want to watch it. And, uh, you know, streaming allows that that to happen. You can, uh, you know, you're not bound down to have to watch this movie or that or a TV series. Uh, at a certain time, I can watch it when, when I'm able to. Uh, I know there's still DVR out there too, uh, but uh, yeah, streaming's here to stay for sure. Netflix, all the DVDs you want, starting at only $9.99 a month, no late fees.